Hong Kong pop star Coco Lee has taken her own life at the age of 48. Now, this also follows a lot of other Asian stars that have recently taken their life as well. And a lot of people are asking questions such as like, how do you actually stop this and why is this happening? For sure, RIP Coco Lee. Uh, for the people who don't know, she was almost like the Britney Spears of the Chinese speaking world. You know, in the late 90s, she had this uh, U.S. Hit, billboard chart hit, uh, Do You Want My Love in 1999. I always remember that one. And um, yeah, a lot of people are just wondering what's going on, Andrew, because this sort of comes on the heels of a lot of people from from various media platforms in Asia that have also followed the same path, right? Yeah, so we're going to go through the comment section. There's a lot of different thoughts out there, but we also want to give our own thoughts as well and kind of give a little bit more details um, about what's going on. But uh, yeah, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys as we get into this. Yeah, I mean, I think anytime somebody who is a big pop star passes away, and especially in this tragic way, um, you know, there's a lot of speculation, right? Especially mm -hmm. about the, the drama and the messiness. She was going through a messy divorce, um, you know, with this guy, Bruce Rockowitz, who, you know, a lot of people don't know. Was he a billionaire? Was he a fake billionaire? Who had more money? Was it actually Coco or was it him? Because now he's contesting the will. And of course, it turns into a lot of like uh, internet going against the people that, that they're, they're blaming it on, right? But it's yeah. unclear. I'm sure it didn't help, but nobody knows what was the the factors when it goes into something so extreme like this. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, details aside, which I think there could be so many different holes that you dig. You can go down the rabbit hole. You can try to be the he internet. Was cheating. You could be the internet investigator. You could be the internet detective and try to pick these things up. Oh, well, this happened. And then she made this post. And I think that one thing you have to realize is no matter how rich and famous you are and no matter almost what you do, anybody is capable of doing this, of taking their own life. Like people at all different levels, poor people that aren't famous to right. rich people who are very famous have done it. So I guess what it's so hard, but I think the key is like you having a, a strong mind and having good people around you. And usually those things are, are the things that are lacking. But right? I do think, you know, she was famous from the time she was 18 until still famous at 48. That's not a regular life to live, though. No, no. I mean, listen, Britney Spears was famous ever since she was a kid, and she had that crazy mental breakdown. I'm sure tons of people thought and that, that she would take her own life. Obviously, now she's recovered. She's kind of being, like, somewhat of a regular person now. But, yeah, it is a, it is a lot to weigh on you, you know, and especially I do think it might affect, you know, even women more, you know, being famous for decades, you know? Um, specifically, um, Andrew, she was going through um, surgeries on her leg that was uh, designed to correct a birth defect. She had breast cancer. Um, you know, I, I guess there were some things with in vitro that weren't working because she, she was trying to have a kid, but mm. it didn't work for a number of right. years. And obviously, I guess that opportunity had passed. I mean, we got to get into the comments section, but a few quick thoughts are, Andrew, there was this saying that somebody uh, put me onto recently that said, you know, there are happy mouses and sad tigers. You know, I think people look at people who quote unquote have it all because she had money and she had fame, but a lot of people don't understand, uh, especially if you got the money through entertainment, there's a lot of pressure that comes along with that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also for sure, and especially if you're kind of like fan centric and you know, if you're always relying on fans to pick you up and, and the fans say good things about you, but sometimes fans can also say horrible things about you. So then that, if you put your self validation into what fans say, then you are also subject to that and letting that affect how you feel about yourself. But anyways, let's get into the comment section because I think that a lot of different people know information or were bigger fans of her than than we were. So so like, let's get in and see what they're saying. Somebody said, this is so heartbreaking. No matter how successful a person looks on the outside, we never know the demons that they are battling behind closed doors. That is why it is important to take care of your mental health, seek help, and check up on your loved ones. Depression looks different for everyone. Yeah, I think it's very easy easy to just say check up on people and oh you got to get mental help you got to get therapy I think those things are very easy I think that at the end of the day like having a strong will and a strong soul and a strong mind about yourself is uh it takes more than just like some therapy sessions it kind of takes your whole system around you well, I, I don't like. think you can just uh you know I'm not an expert in this at all but it probably takes a whole life change like Let's just say life is made out of 10 parts. It probably takes a change to more than just one yeah. out of the and, 10. And right? I think if you don't have that around you and you need like a remedy for something for your depression, I'm sure it's going to 
it's going to come out in, in more extreme forms. But certainly depression is no joke, guys. And I don't care who, what, there's a lot of people who have accomplished a lot of things in life. Andrew, very successful, whether it's in business or this field or that mm-hmm. field, who suffer from depression. That is clear. Um, somebody said, sad thing is that mental health is very overlooked in uh, being raised Asian. I mean, we've talked about this before. Is it true uh, that mental health is like not looked after? However, Andrew... In American media and entertainment, whether we're talking about uh, Bourdain or Robin Williams or even back to Marilyn Monroe or like uh, James Dean, there's been a history of uh, taking your own life through depression as well. Yeah, yeah. And I think also I I wouldn't doubt that social media has to play into this or, um, you know, sometimes some people even feel like, like, oh, like other famous people do it. So like, you know, that's a way to go out. Somebody said she should have looked for true love instead of just going with the billionaire. Of course, these are the judgy comments that sort of come out in there. I I don't know. I I was not, I didn't keep up with like any of the gossip until these stories started coming out. I mean, Michelle Yeoh is married to a billionaire. I feel like she's going to be fine. Um, people were just uh, sort of memorializing her. Dude, I grew up in Thailand in the 2000s. She was bigger than Britney to us. Man, she was just the king, queen of late 90s Asian pop, especially, you know, mixing it with the English and in-language stuff. Somebody said, man, she was more like Christina Aguilera because she did the Mandarin version of Reflections mm-hmm. when Mulan, the Disney one, came out. And somebody said, sometimes professional help will solve the issue, but sometimes it will not. And a lot of people were talking about ideation versus follow through because the truth is Andrew a lot of people probably at some point in their life have contemplated suicide right mm-hmm. like yeah. like of the general population yeah even Tupac said he did you know a lot of people a lot of people have yeah um somebody said I hope that she found the peace that she was looking for mm. and um of course this turned into a whole you know debate about whether it's the right thing to do wrong thing to do if you are at a point where you cannot find any further you know what I mean like what what, what is the morality in it right 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 I mean I, I would say uh, it'd be probably worse to hurt other people out of depression, you know? But yeah, this is a pretty, this is obviously one of the most extreme things you could possibly do. Somebody said, the eyes never lie. They are the window to the soul. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, I do think the eyes are more telling oftentimes than the smiles though, because the smiles, you can kind of fake a smile, but it's hard to fake the look in your eyes. But definitely, yeah, I, I don't know if that, what the science is behind this. Right. Um, somebody said it could be hormonal too, because when uh, women go through menopause, you know, there's mm. a depression related. But I do think that a lot of stuff um, is m- hormonal too, though. Like a lot of, we're not, unless you go to medical school or you take classes on it, you are not like trained to understand the, the multitude of chemicals that make up a brain. Well, I mean, honestly, when you start to look at all the factors and whether or not these are true or not, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of elements coming together. You know, that could be kind of sad, like given everything that we just said that what uh, based on what people know about uh, her life and then not to mention the details that we don't know about her life, you know? Yeah. Somebody said uh, maybe medicine helps or maybe it hurts, though, because a lot of people are debating right now and about, you know, you know, it goes into a whole debate in the Western world right now about big pharma and whether people should be on drugs or not drugs or because a lot of people, they, you know how we were talking about earlier about shifting all 10 aspects of your life. A lot of people, they're like, Oh, just keep all those the same. And then you take a pill and then, and then people are also talking about like what type of drugs, like, are we talking about the less regulated ones like a shrooms or something that's supposed to make you more like euphoric or like give you a different sense of being, you know, things like that. Could that have helped I don't know. Yeah, somebody said, man, I had wish they had access to drugs like shrooms in Asia or at least weed, possibly. I think, um, you know, guys, like I said, I'm not a subject matter expert. I would say allowing certain things is so tough to say, Andrew, because probably for some people, it could help their situation. But if you institute some sort of like mass allowance of certain things, some people who are allowed access to those things, it's going to hurt their situation Mm -hmm. because each of these issues is so incredibly individual. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Somebody says, how come it seems like there's such a rise of addiction and mental health issues? Society in 2023 seems broken. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you think this is just a media cycle, Andrew? Or there is something legitimately wrong about the times that we're in? Is it social media? Because like we said, this is not just isolated to, to one region. I mean, it's all of Asia. It's all of East Asia in particular. But a lot of stars, whether you're talking about drama, singers, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Yeah, I think a lot of famous people who have been in the public eye and kind of are these people who want to leave a legacy. I think sometimes 
it's easy that it could cross your mind like, hey, well, what would happen if I took my own life? If I died right now, like how would my legacy be left? And I think that um, I, I think anybody can think about suicide, but I think particularly if you're famous, you're thinking about your legacy and what do people act like or think like after you're gone? And, you know, a lot of people think like that. There's been a lot of songs about that, too. Somebody said uh, one piece of advice that I actually learned is that you just have to talk to somebody and just bring it up directly, asking them, hey, are you thinking of killing themselves? Studies have shown this does not increase the risk that they'll do it, but it does increase the risk that they will tell you that something is going on. So basically, somebody said, I want to just use this as an opportunity to let everybody know you should normalize bringing it up. Yeah. No, I, I do think even if you think someone is having thoughts of killing someone else and you bring it up to him and be like, Hey, are you thinking about killing somebody? And then they're like, Oh shoot. Woo. Well, maybe if it's that yeah. obvious, cause maybe you're saying I maybe subconsciously people are like dropping hints. Yeah, yeah not, I yeah. think so. I, I'm not sure, man. I'm not a psychologist, but it seems like people would rather drop hints and make it kind of like mysterious. But if you kind of call it out and it brings it up to the public, then people are like, Oh, Oh, it's almost like shining a light on it, no. and then everything scrambles away. You like know we I mean? said, guys, everybody's situation is it's everybody's case, to case. Maybe to case, perhaps man. you know my general takeaway is this: like, I think we can all look at these things. Her divorce. Oh, she didn't exercise enough. Oh, she didn't do yoga enough. She didn't meditate enough. Oh, she wasn't religious. Oh, yeah, she didn't right. Have like this. she needed. To, like a lot of people were saying, "Oh man, if you work at an animal shelter, yeah. that has been shown she, to be the she, number one suicide." She didn't have prevention. enough pets. She didn't save enough. Days. She didn't have kids. All these factors we could look at and kind of give it a percentage and guess about it in our minds. But some people are maybe just going to, like, they're just, like, I don't know if you can fully stop this, you know? Oh, well, because well, it's choice. been a part of, actually, society for forever. Yeah. As long as written history goes. I, I think, Whether it's, uh, you know, people in the royal court or high-profile yeah. people in any world, right? Yeah, but the best way is to have mental health checkups along the way. You know, I think you can't check up on someone... When it's too late, when they're already... 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. When they're right already, here. like, you know, older, it's almost like her whole rise up, people got to be checking, you know? And then it's still even then, you never know what's going what's going through someone else's brain. So I think that's I, the hardest thing about it. And this is I, I do believe people are normalizing it, Andrew. Something that sort of shocked me and I know was viewed as very taboo in the NBA world, Andrew. John Wall recently came out and said that he had contemplated taking his own life. Yeah. And that's super something... You would not think that John Wall would say. Yeah, no. Some other NBA players had said that they they suffered from depression too. Kevin and Love, right? Yeah, Kevin Love, Jamar DeRozan. I think that, you know, I think it takes a lot of courage, especially to talk about that as an athlete because it makes you sound weak. But even as a pop star, you know, a lot of people don't want to mention that. A lot of people just want to put on that public image like, I'm strong. You know, I do it for my fans. Uh, you don't want to be vulnerable. Um, but sometimes I do think, you know... When you feel like people are being overly dramatic, sometimes that's what their way of saying, hey guys, I've thought about it, but the way that it's publicly sounding is like it's a cry for attention. Because you know what I mean? How some fans might look at her being depressed as a cry for attention, but it could just be her releasing also her thoughts about it as well. So then you never know because as a fan, it's, are, you judging, very, it? are yeah. you judging it like, oh, they're just doing that for attention and, and they want everybody to feel bad for them? Or oh, wow, this is actually a real thing. Right. It's very, very difficult to judge. I do think being a star in Asia, you are, and I'm not saying that this played into it all, but I do know the structure of being a star in Asia, Andrew, is different than being a star in the West. Like, you almost have to be a really good role model in the East versus in the West, there's a little bit more room to be like, I guess, what, self-destructive? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. I mean... What do you think about the final comment that people were just like saying? You know, obviously there was a lot of people in the comments saying, man, all these people that seem like they have it all, like they're rich and they're famous, they're in all these elite circles of, you know, this owner of this company or something like that. And, um, but yeah, it clearly goes to show you, like I said earlier, like it's not about just like how much money you have in the bank or how high your status is, right? Yeah. If you're unhappy. Yeah, I, I think that... Uh I don't, those things don't truly make you happy and happy for a long term. And happy is, dude, happy is just a feeling, man. Like, you kind of have to have a larger mission. And wh whether that's having kids or that's having a charity or having some type of other mission besides just music and being rich or being famous or being pretty or, or being, like, 
uh, having all this attention. Then right. this. I, 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 I would say that those things more bring dopamine than they do yes. l- long term. It's not about feeling happy. You can take a bunch of drugs and feel happy. Right, because you can force even your uh, serotonin receptors open yeah. to to dump and things. like You have like to that. feel purposeful. Usually, people with a purpose. And I mean, but it also can be a hormonal imbalance inside your brain. I think it's so different. Like I said, person to person, I'm not a subject matter expert. I'm not trying to pass judgment, you know, at all. I'm just trying to bring it up. And one thing that I would think that would really help Andrew in Asia specifically is if there was a a different way to explain mental health that wasn't so necessarily, you know how like the Western version is all about like explaining it through these terms that I think there's a lot of very hard for Asians to understand. I think a more technical understanding of more valves and different chemicals would help Asians understand it Oh, better. you mean like, like a you more- know, it's not going to be like this flowery read like seven books version mm. and go, you, cause Asians, the culture is different. Yeah. You mean like you want to hear some more scientific remedies. That's what even resonates with me more than you know, the other style. So anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Of course, keep it respectful. Do you think that Asians need to look more into mental health specifically for the celebrities in the media or just in society in general? And uh, of course, let us know what is your favorite moment of Coco Lee in the comment section below. But of course, our, our, our main goal is to always have a takeaway for the community and, you know, just so everybody can like have take away something from this. RIP. Until next time, we'd hop out, boys. We out. Peace. Peace.